So today we are going to discuss about the left axis deviation and we are going to discuss the vector analysis for left axis deviation due to left ventricular hypertrophy and left bundle branch block. In the previous lecture we discussed that the mean QRS ventricular vector or the cardiac vector in a normal heart in a normal uh, ventricle is about 59 degree and we also discussed how to determine this normal axis and we discussed the importance of lead 1 and lead 3 in determining the mean axis or the normal axis of the normal cardiac vector that is the direction of the cardiac vector in a normal human being then we discussed the causes of the left axis deviation and we discussed that this mean vector it can be shifted toward the left side and it can be shifted toward the right side the the the, the conditions which shift the vector toward the left side they include after deep expiration after uh, in obesity in a fatty person and after lying down these are the factors which can shift the temporarily the shift the vector in the uh, toward the left side but there are some factor which can permanently shift the vector toward the left side and two most important factors are the left ventricular hypertrophy and the left bundle branch block so here is the our frame here is our measuring tape what or the measuring scale or whatever we call it this is the measuring scale through which we are going to measure the vector and we have discussed again and again the scale the measure the the the, the number of this measuring scales are fixed fixed lead 1 has a 0 degree lead 2 has 60 degree lead 3 has 120 uh, 120 degree avf has 90 degree and so on so forth and these these vectors are basically the position of these vectors are fixed they are looking toward the cardiac vector from different angles the, the vector of the cardiac um, the, ex, the direction of the cardiac axis or the cardiac vector keep on changing but the values of these parameters or this measuring scale remains fixed and with the help of this measuring scale we determine the direction of the cardiac axis or the cardiac vector so again applying the same measuring scale and we will we discussed that we only consider lead 1 and lead 3 to determine the mean QRS ventricular axis so again when we discuss in the left ventricular hypertrophy this is a condition in which the left side of the heart has hypertrophied or increased in size this is a normal heart but this is a heart with left ventricular hypertrophy the reason for this condition are many the most common condition to cause left ventricular hypertrophy is high blood pressure because the heart has to pump against high resistance which lead to hypertrophy or increase in size of the left side of the heart other conditions include aortic stenosis or aortic regurg which also put a lot of pressure on the left side of the heart and which leads to increase in the muscle mass of the left ventricle so normally the ECG on the ECG strip the lead 1 the lead 2 and the lead 3 look like this but in left ventricular hypertrophy this lead 3 you can see it has clearly been uh, it is clearly directed toward the downside or the, its direction has been changed which, which clearly shows a shift toward the left side and on vector analysis if we see this normal vector this normal vector from 59 degree has shifted toward the left side to minus 15 degree it's because when in left ventricular hypertrophy we plot the the axis of the lead 1 and the lead 3 we get the figures which are shifted toward the left side and normally in high blood pressure uh, which cause the left ventricular hypertrophy this figure is about minus 15 it is shifted toward the left side similarly the other most important cause for the shift toward the left or the left axis deviation is left bundle branch block 
we discussed previously that the electric spark for the conduction for the contraction or the heartbeat comes from the s a node from the s a node it comes to the a v node and from the a v node through the purkinje fibers it goes into the ventricle it has two branches the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch so right bundle and left bundle these two branches provide the electric spark to two different sides of the heart if one of this is blocked electric spark toward this side or the electric current or the depolarization toward this side will be delayed so right side of the heart has been depolarized but the left side has remained um has remained polarized it has depolarized but it has remained polarized same condition is occurring in the left ventricular hypertrophy in the normal heart the whole of the heart has been depolarized it has gained negativity in the same time in the same conditions but in the hypertrophied heart the it has the right side has depolarized but the left side has remained polarized because the vector is more toward the left side because there is more muscle mass on the left side apart from that high increased muscle mass the quantity of the muscle mass and the time required to travel in a hypertrophied mass has increased the duration of depolarization on the left side similarly block on the left bundle has increased the time for depolarization on the left side this has led to a late depolarization the right side of the ventricle get depolarized very quickly but the block there is a block on the left side so the electric signal the spark the depolarization or the electric current that has started from the sinus node cannot travel easily toward the left side so it takes a long time so when it takes a long time the ecg appearing on the strip has a long appearance the duration the width of the ecg has also increased if you compare the left axis deviation due to the left bundle branch and left axis deviation due to the left ventricular hypertrophy you will see that the dura duration of qrs complex due to bundle branch is increased the width is very much high as compared to the width of the qrs complex due to left ventricular hypertrophy although the muscle mass slow down the depolarization process toward the left side but a block in the conduction toward the left side will take more time and the left the vector will be shifted more toward the left side and here you see the mean vector has turned toward the left side about minus 50 degree which normally is about 59 degree so that's all about the left axis deviation left axis deviation is just the deviation of the normal cardiac vector or the mean ventricular qrs vector toward the left side it can be shifted toward the left side due to expiration it can shift it toward the left side in obesity and in a fit person and during lying down similarly it is shifted toward the left side in left ventricular hypertrophy and left bundle branch block normally the value of mean axis is about 59 degree and the qrs and the lead 1 lead 2 and lead 3 look like this and the depolarization process of the ventricle is the same it occurs at the same time in left ventricular hypertrophy the vector is shifted to about minus 59 degree the the appearance of the ecg has changed in lead 1 lead 2 and lead 3 and the muscle mass on the left side has increased which has led to more time being taken by the current toward the left side in the left bundle branch block the the vector has shifted toward the left side about minus 50 degree and the appearance of the ecg qrs complex in lead 1 2 and 3 has not only shifted toward the left side but it has also increased in its width 
or its size because of the more time taken by the current to travel toward the left side. So that's all about the left axis deviation. In the next lecture, we will be discussing the right axis deviation. Thanks a lot for watching the video.